record. Yes, nigga. Oh, wrong thing. Okay, we lit it just like a fuse, so don't need to pick and choose. Welcome to 2020, where we do more than interviews. The hottest beat coming through, jumping knowledge on all of you. Get up, we got the front of you with the truth that they offer you. Yeah, hands up, we do it for the culture. To give artists and businesses more exposure. Keep it real and stay solid just like a boulder. It's about to go all the way down, can get no lower. Chasing my dreams, know that they get no slower. But if I stay running, I promise they're getting closer. More over success, my older. And if you're sleeping on me, I'm winning them up like boulders. I told you, coming from the land with the tide roll, we'll be on the whole different vibe though we like to ride slow and keep a window tennis so you really can see us like stevie wonder waking up with his eyes closed yeah got the kind of flow that rock the boat on my 16s and pounds of dope and if you figure you can hang with me on the mic and grab some rope matter of fact better grab some hope while you at it we keep it live it's time to tune in turn up the sound on what you're using it goes so hard i think it's bruising the show is 2020 no need to zoom in yeah Hey, yo, what's up? It's your boy, sir, of the 2020 podcast, LLC. Please say the LLC. And I got my brother in the building, man. One of my bulldogs from back in the day, Mr. Chris Duncan is in the building. What's good, bro? What's up, fam? What? Man, long time coming. Long time coming. I know, right? So, bro, just to to give people listening a little bit of background, Chris and I attended college together. We were in the same dorm. And so... We have stories. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> Honorary we, next door neighbor, man. Right, right. We we were technically neighbors. Um, but something I, I was mentioning to Chris is that something I noticed about all the people I came across that I was blessed to be friends with while my time in college is that everybody is doing something, you know, following their passion, following something they are are passionate about and just achieving their dreams, man. So on a roll clothing. Let's talk about it, bro. So, Chris, if anybody was to ask what honor roll clothing was about, what would you tell them? Man, you know, the the million dollar question right there. I would say that it's a unisex lifestyle brand Um, It's me and two other partners. Um, We they actually started the brand back in 2010. uh, And the the heart behind the founder, Blair, his heart was. (laughs) He was never on the honor roll. And that was always the the good kids were the ones on the honor roll. And so he wanted to make a brand that represented honor roll students of life. Those people that continue to grind, those people that are on whatever path that they're on and they're pursuing it full fledged. So he wanted to create that. And then my other business partner was never on the honor roll. So he was like, yeah, I support that. And then I joined the team and I was like, oh, I was always on the honor roll. So <laughs> I don't know what what to tell you, but I mean, I think that who cannot resonate with the underdog, like understanding that journey of making it and pushing past it. Like I'm a kid from St. Louis, Missouri, that first generation to go to college. Like you said, we met down there in college and yeah, college for first gen people or for those people from the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Like your first year, you just standing there like, hold on, I don't really know how to take all this in, all this love, because that's not where we come from. And then you start just growing through it and like getting used to the love and respecting one another. So, yeah, that's what we wanted to encapsulate in a in a brand of just being able to tell our true, authentic stories. I'm from St. Louis. My one business partner is from. Washington Heights up in um, New York, and then my other business partners from Compton. So we cover in the middle, east, and west. That's dope. That's dope. And and with pursuing something of this caliber, you know, it takes inspiration to kind of keep going. So what ins- what inspires you guys to kind of brand the way that you guys do? Because true, everybody. It's, it's intriguing to to view yourself as the underdog and then push against, you know, like other corporations in the same field. You know, there are plenty of brands out there. But to to look at yourself and say, yeah, I'm I'm up there with them. What inspires you or keeps your gas going in that light? 
Yeah, man. I, I mean, I'm, I have found out I am a little different in the sense of I don't typically look left or right. It's just a goal. And that unfortunately sometimes can even rob me of enjoying the, the process and enjoying mm-hmm. the journey because I'm so goal focused um, that I'll reach that goal and then I'll just go straight to another goal and not actually turn around and look at where I came from and the journey to actually get there. And literally, it's so funny that you asked about the branding. That's why our tagline is excellence is a process. And so Mm -hmm. excellence is not the goal. Excellence is the process. Every day that you get up, regardless if you feel like getting up or not, going after whatever you love, like regardless if you feel like it, that's part of your excellence journey is literally just trying, giving it some effort. And so that's what motivates me is that every single day, it may not be a home run and I may strike out at the plate, but I have another at bat. Every single time I come up, I'm going to do my best. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's that's what I like to hear. You know, that perseverance does show its fruit, you know, later on. So shout out to y'all for keeping it together, man. So Yeah, man, but 11 years is crazy, bro. You know, and I'm I'm glad you brought up the time frame cuz that was part of my next question with how long you guys had been, you know, keeping the gas in the tank, you know, per se. So let me let me ask you this because this is one of the questions I don't really hear from entrepreneurs very often. <laughs> How do you manage to balance, you know, being a family man, being an entrepreneur, and then finding that space for yourself, you know, because it's important to have that balance. So how do you guys find it? You in particular. Man, some uh, some piece, <laughs> to be honest, is horribly is the answer. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, we've been 11 years and. I know you said 11 years of keeping the gas in the tank. It ran dry a couple times, bro. Like, it, <laughs> it, it's technically 11 years, but we have two years that we have literally taken off. I have um, quit on a row so many times, bro. Like, it was a little stretch over, like, two to three years to where, like, I'll start turning up and it'll be like, oh, yeah, Chris going to quit tomorrow because <laughs> that was just like uh, – I ain't got to take this, you know, that whole thing um, to where now, man, we just in a groove. We just we click with each other. And like we it's almost like that second nature when when you are vibing with people and you've been in the trenches so long for with each other. You got one person that's a sharp sh- shooter that mm-hmm. you can post up. You got another person that is literally going to be on the ground, being able to put the pieces of the puzzle together on the spot. Got mm-hmm. another person that may not be, you know, um, particularly skilled in that, but he can do strategy really well. So that's how we just kind of, you know, Voltron that thing. Like apart, mm-hmm. you know, we we only can do so much apart, but together we make something way greater. You know, I like to hear the team strategy and capitalizing on your strengths. So let's let's talk about weakness for a little bit because I think that's only fair. It's only fair. Oh, for so. Sure. At any point in time, did you feel, you know, with you saying you quit, you know, a few times over the two period, two year period at any point in time, you know, did you feel that you guys wouldn't be successful? And if so, who or what changed your mind to come back? Yeah, it definitely felt like um, we wouldn't be successful more than a few times. Um, I would say what changed my mind is one, the story that needs to be told. So I would look at other brands, other clothing lines, uh, one that would tell the narrative of black youth or black people and they not black. I I start to really take issue with that. Now, mind you, everybody comes from their own background, but you're telling the story of 90s hip hop and you're telling it as an observer, whereas me and my people, we actually lived that like. We weren't mm-hmm. just rocking baggy cl- pants or whatever. Like it was real. Like we weren't listening to people talking about selling crack. Like that was X, Y, Z down the street from us. That <laughs> my grandma was like, "Yo, when they out, you can't walk down there." Mm-hmm. You know, or you walk down there, you dap everybody up, and they know that you're not even involved with that. That's just the people you grew up with in the neighborhood, where the OGs were only two years older than you, because that's just what it is. And so, I. That's one of the motivate motivational factors is like I just got tired of people telling me my story that didn't actually live it. And so that was one reason why I said I had to keep going Two, 
I just really started to believe. I always believed in the brand, but I really started to believe in what the brand was doing. Um, then, you know, like, we'll figure this out. Like, this is a jigsaw puzzle. And, you know, you get frustrated, you get annoyed, but you're going to figure it out. And even if you don't figure it, it all the way out completely at one point in time, like, still just put the pieces of the puzzle together. Fact. I love it, man. Don't give up. All right. So let's talk about one of your favorite memories, you know, like 11 years is a long time. So was there any one moment that occurred that was like, you know what? This was that validation. I hit Man, that milestone. It, it's crazy, bro. It it happened with the high end low on the same night. We um got a loan. Um, we had somebody, an investor come through back in the day. Uh, this probably was 2013, 2012. Um, <laughs> we had an investor come through, um, throw some cash into the company, super excited, you know, family member of one of our partners. We, we thinking we doing, we, we hot as bait clowns, bro. We thinking we doing it. So of course, like any, um, uneducated, um, youth, we, we went to the club and so <laughs> we bought a section and we, we popping bottles. I'm talking about like. One of my partners sitting on the back of a couch. And I mean, this is Atlanta 2012 buying section. So oh, whoa. like he he's sitting on the back of the couch with the bottle of my wet. I'm got the double fist of uh, Ciroc, you know, like in the club with the sunglasses on. And we looked at that tab the next day and was like, bro, we just blew about $3,500 of this money Ooh. You know, for no reason in the club. And so it was like validation and then and the reality hit at the same exact time like yeah we doing this and we were very stupid with how we just stored that money man well you know now that you've told that story you know hopefully someone else will remember this moment and be like you know what i'm gonna go you know hit up the dollar tree get me one <laughs> You got to celebrate. Now, that is one right. of the biggest things that I have learned is that you got to celebrate. You got to you have to bake in celebrating the wins, big or small. Like if you don't set that up for yourself, like you'll just burn out eventually. So like you got to celebrate. But you can budget it like you right. got to go, you know, out here to some crazy island. Go to Miami, bro. Like you'll be all right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you but. Find whatever that balance, that harmony is. Like you gotta celebrate now while grinding. And yeah, it's all a journey, man. That is. So while speaking of the journey, let's talk long term. Because salute to you guys making 11 and to here's to 11 more. Thank so you. So that being said, where would you like to see yourself as a person, as a dad, as an entrepreneur in the next one year? Mm. In the next three years and then in the next 10 years got you next one year as a husband um slightly still annoying the hell out of my wife um but to where we can say that we annoying each other and mm. like whatever and go into another room um as long as we got that line of communication of being like like even tonight like she hate wrestling but she doesn't hate wrestling but i'm gonna watch wrestling like i gotta follow storylines wwe is very whack right now for not pushing big e but that's a whole nother Ooh, conversation we'll talk later <laughs> um yeah man so within the in the next year man i just want to enjoy my family like i have a daughter that's about to come of age into herself as a woman you know she's about to transition into that period so I just want us to be able to have some real conversations about mm -hmm. like, yo, um, cause she asked me about spirituality about a week ago. So just talking through those things that I couldn't come to the people that raised me and ask them. Um, because if you, especially when I grew up, if you even questioned the Bible, like had literally just had a question, like, yo, how did he get two of every animal? Boy, you ask that again, you're burning in hell. Like, right. oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I want to be able to to answer whatever questions that my daughter may have. Um, as a business owner, man, like, it's so crazy because, like, I'm a business owner twice over. I've been owning Threshold, my marketing company, for six years as well. So mm -hmm. 
like I just want to enjoy the ride. Like I was riding around the other day. It was probably about 2 p.m. in the afternoon or maybe before 2 because I hate rush hour. So I try to get in <laughs> before that start. But um, and I was just like, man, this is my life. Like, like I still got to get home and do some work and hop on some calls. But like, this is my life. Um, so, yeah, man, it was just one of those things of like. Um, I just want to, a year from now, especially, man, I'm about to launch a whole brick and mortar coffee. Oh, All my loves are coming into one spot. So like, we're going to have an actual boutique for on road. There's going to be a, a coffee spot there. There's going to be, um, uh, uh, a retail space for magazines and music or books and music. Let me not say magazines. Um, so yeah, like I love magazines, but I mean, you know, for, my educated folk. Um, my my wife uh, was an English major at Spelman, so it's oh. books here. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, man. Um, I would say within a year to five years for that of just being able to say like, man, I launched this, and this is something that I love. Honoro can have its own space. Like we still are in that space to where we have to like literally today, I just confirmed that we're doing the pop-up shop at this spot down here in Atlanta. So like, we still have to hustle for that now right. to find these spaces. So to have our own space, it is going to feel good, you know, to where we know at least like, yo, like no matter what, we got somewhere to always be. So that would be within five years. Um, my daughter would be 15 at that time. So, I don't know, man. Hopefully, you know, um, buying her a whip and not worrying about um, the stuff that I have to worry about at her age, that she can still be a kid. Um, yeah, man. I'll, and 10 years, ooh, well, I'll be in 10 years, 45. Mm -hmm. So, and hopefully looking at only doing things that make me happy, having enough cash on reserve, money in the bank. Um, we're good as a family. My daughter would be um what she 10 so 20 so in college you know if she wants to pursue college um so i hope that she just has a solid foundation and feels like she could talk to me about anything and i just play the role of a counselor i don't tell her what to do i just be like hey have you thought about this or that <laughs> and just step back and let her live her life um yeah like i said with me and my wife just just chilling, man, like with no drama in our lives um, and with the business. I don't know, man, if I'm going to be looking at retirement in 10 years, like thinking through like what I I, I don't know if I want to retire by the time I'm 45. But like thinking through like, all right, what would retirement actually look like? Like, do mm -hmm. I only do what I want to do? Do I have to still stack for another 10 years to be good for the rest of my life? I don't know what that looks like, but. Playing that out, man. Like I made a shift maybe three years ago where I stopped thinking about like check to check living and surviving. And I started making a real effort to cross over into thriving. Like I spent, yes. yeah, man, I spent the majority of my life worrying about surviving. I don't come from, I mean, like, you know, I don't come from like a silver spoon <laughs> background. Like we scratched and claw for everything. And so to be in this space of like, man, like, I feel like I need to throw on, like, a button-up shirt and only button up one button up out here. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm on some linen shorts. Like, this this just feels like extra innings, man. Like, right. this is, I want to enjoy this. So, I want to thrive for the rest of my life is the goal. I love that, brother. And I, I, I also speak that into existence for you, my brother. Good talk. All right. Well, Chris, if anybody wanted to contact you guys regarding the brand or they just maybe want to pick your brain or just maybe just get some words of inspiration from you. What's the best way to get in contact with you guys? Yeah. So the website, if you want to check out the brand is on a roll clothing. So on a roll, like in school, H O N O R R O L L <laughs> and then clothing because most people only put one R. So honor roll clothing.com we're on a roll clothing on social as well. And if you need to hit us up info at on a roll shop.com. Sorry about that. I, I threw a dagger. I need to set up those emails. I just <laughs> reminded myself. <that. laughs> and you did well, you did well. Final question, brother. And I dedicate this question to everybody listening. The hardest thing to do 
is to take an idea and run with it, especially when you're passionate about it. It's also the scariest. What words of encouragement do you have for that person who has a dream, but they are afraid to pursue it? And I am really, truly inspired. Like I, I saw a common thread listening to Diddy, listening to Oprah, listening to Nip. All they said was just keep going. Like if it's an inch one day, if it's a mile the next day, like stop worrying about the mile and just just put one foot in front of the other. So you scared? We all scared. Um, it's mm -hmm. a line from Black Hawk Down where the commanding officer tells a dude like, yo, like they get ambushed and he tells a dude like, yo, you need to drive. Get in the driver's seat. You need to drive. And the guy responds back to him. I'm shot. And the commanding officer says, we all shot drive and that's mm -hmm. how i try to pursue life it's like bruh we all out here we all scared like i don't care what nobody says like the the rich person that you may know or think like they still have a fear of something a failure that's what drives them so use that fear and literally let it be your motivation instead of being the the reason why you don't pursue like my mom told me some long time ago because I was like, but what if it doesn't happen? And she said, what if it does happen? Mm -hmm. Like, you're going you're gonna to cry. You're going to be. <laughs> I remember when I made the decision to go full time with my business. My mom, literally, I was talking to her and she was like, yo, you going to be broke. You broke when you go to work every day. So <laughs> you might as well be broke doing what you love. You know, and now I'm not saying that's for everybody. <laughs> <Be wise. laughs> um yeah but be wise in it but also like yo that fear is something else and i promise you i know it well um but you just gotta keep going you gotta tell i would also just in practical wisdom i would say tell people that you trust your dream so they can hold you accountable to it because mm. i promise you people literally will bring up something i didn't even know i told them and would be like yo like are you still doing such and such? And I'm like, oh, nah, I ain't like, didn't you say that that's what you want to do? Like, oh, snap. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So tell people that you know and you love and you trust. Tell them the vision. Tell them the dream. Like, even if they don't get it, like, that's when you need to make sure that you keep people around you that can be like, I don't really get all that, bro. But I support you and I mess with you the long way. So I got you. It is. There it is, man. Brother, I appreciate you taking time out your day to do this with me. Oh, it's always awesome. good to reconnect, man. For sure, man. Appreciate you for having me, man. For sure. For sure. And uh, with that being said, it's been your boy, sir, Chris Duncan, Honor Roll Clothing, Hopkins Hall, Alabama oh. and m University. If you don't know what the hop is, yeah, ain't nothing to talk about. <laughs> But with that being said, we are out. Blessings.